Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. I really did not want to record a video. In fact, I really didn't want to do this at all. I could have just moved on and just watched some of the movies and shows that I have in my collection, or just watched some other shows or movies on TV, or perhaps straight out of uh, Amazon Fire Stick TV, or just spend time on the computer watching some YouTube videos or or any other internet um, sources and other stuff and maybe watch some movies on there or just go around you know with the family just hang it around do whatever we want you know, spend some free time anything but having to waste my time doing a video where I have to defend one of my favorite movies of all time. And this is going to be yet another video, which is, you guessed it, Good Burger. It's going to be my fourth video, starting with my movie review, the, the VHS tape that I recorded from pay-per-view, uh, along with the two books I have, all signed by Kill Mitchell, later on, of course, <laughs> um, including this DVD that I got, which I bought at Circuit City back in 2007, and they finally got a release in 2003 in widescreen, but no features. Yeah, it's a shame, of course. And even to this day, we still haven't got a Blu-ray. There's a high-definition transfer available that you can find online. I mean, it's on streaming, but we still haven't received a Blu-ray, especially with features. Anyway, I love this movie because... Keenan Thompson and Kill Mitchell are one of my favorites. They're a great comic duo. They're right up there with Laura and Hardy and Albert and Costello and I guess Penn and Teller to join in. They're very talented guys. They worked so hard. I mean, come on, man. Even at this age, I mean, they were almost adults when they got the roles. I mean, they were teenagers. This was based on an all that sketch, which was very funny. It, it was a whole series of them, which you have Ed, who's a dim-witted, but sometimes he could be smart and intelligent in his own ways, sort of like um, Spagoli in Fast Times at Richmond High, or even Bill and Ted, you know, from the Bill and Ted movies, and yes, even Beavis and Butthead. So, of course, you're going to have a guy exactly like Ed, who talks exactly like a dude. I mean, he goes around, you know, saying, Welcome to the Good Burger, home of the Good Burger, can I take your order? Yeah, and the customers always gets their order. He goes around saying to the mic, One Good Burger, that'll be eight bucks. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I love this movie to death because that's the thing. I mean, when I heard they were going to do a theatrical film based on the sketch, I was very excited. I mean, considering the fact that I lost my cable in 1995, yeah, somehow in the fall, which sucks because I wish I had Nickelodeon back so I could watch some more episodes of all that. When I learned that Keenan Kill, um, the TV show, was coming out, because this was their first um, TV series with Keenan Thompson and Kill Mitchell, I, I was actually very excited to check this out. Because I had a feeling it's going to be even more funnier than ever before. Now, for those that don't know, of course, Keenan Thompson started out in D2 The Mighty Ducks along with one of my favorite films of all time, Heavyweights. 
So it's really interesting to see him on a Nickelodeon show, you know, thinking that he's doing two ways to one, you know, Disney and, and Nickelodeon. And having a team up with Kill, I mean, I thought this would be fun. You know, now they're going to become the next big thing, even in the 90s. <laughs> so when I heard that Good Burger was coming out, uh, this was the second Nickelodeon film to come out after Harriet the Spy with Michelle Trackenberg and Rosie O'Donnell. I was really uh, curious about it and I really want to see it uh, because I saw the article on Nickelodeon magazine and even Blockbuster. Yeah, Blockbuster was part of Biocom at the time, so they advertised it. I was like, wow, we're finally going to get a movie that's based on all that. That's awesome. And of course, all that features uh, Angelique Bates, Lloyd Beth Denbird. Josh Server, Alicia Rise, and then later we got Amanda Bynes, um, Danny Tamarelli, Leon Ferguson, Christy Knowings, and then of course Nick Cannon, Mark Saul, Gabriel Iglesias, and all the rest. And then the new cast come around, yeah, including Jamie Lee, Jamie Lynn Spears. The sister of Britney Spears, go figure, before she went on to do Zoe 101. And now they bought the series back uh, since last year, which not only that, but, you know, they're bringing the spirit back to life, especially when they brought in a pop-up restaurant in Los Angeles. I was so lucky to meet Kill Mitchell for the first time when I went to Flappers Comedy Club in Burbank. And I did film just a few of the footage as you saw, including that moment, which I love. I just wish I filmed more of that, but, well, we had to take some time. And that's when I finally met my friend, Brandon Mitchell, yeah, aka Web Movie One, joining in with Gabriel. Okando, aka Hero Super 99, yeah. And then we are joined in with all of Brendan's friends, I believe, or just just a few, such as 90s Kids Forever, or Ismo, I think that's how you pronounce. Okay, okay. It was cool. It was awesome. And I actually joined in with Opa, um, along with my sister Eileen. Uh, we had a great time in 2015. Okay. And the first time I saw Good Burger, of course, Eagle Rock Plaza, which was Pacific Feeders at the time, they were showing in second run, double features. It was actually double feature with the Lost World Jurassic Park, as I remembered. And when I saw it for the first time, because um, it did came out on July 25th, I wanted to see it, because I was right next door to YMCA. I had to spend more time over there just, uh, you know, playing basketball, you know, doing some exercise, or even playing racquetball, not to mention swimming, you know, joining in with my brother Jason. Because we had a movie theater right next door, which is Man Feeders. And they were playing the film over there, and I really wanted to see it, but, yeah, you know, we had to spend all summer doing this stuff. It sucks, I know, but, hey, at least we did a lot of fun activities. But I finally got to see the movie on Labor Day weekend. Yeah, it was Labor Day weekend because we were about to start um, middle school. Well, I had to start middle school. My brother was still in elementary. And, I, and this time I went to see it with Anna, yeah, my, my aunt, and we had a great time. Um, I remember they were showing the movie with um, the Ashley Now shorts, which is the one where it had uh, Kiss, the band Kiss, where suddenly the giant baby was chasing and was ready to attack the band along with everyone. But it was up to the Ashley now to stop him. 
Yeah, which I, I still remember, you know, uh, Meltman actually playing the guitar riff of Rockabye Baby <laughs> and causes the, the giant baby to sleep. Yeah, you can find the shorts uh, somewhere online if you can, but it was very funny. This was played before the movie, and I was laughing hysterically. I had a good time. You know, it was exactly what I pictured it. It was shot on location in West Corvina. It was actually a local restaurant before it became a taco place. Um, it definitely has a feel of a fast food joint. And I, I love the I love the concept of a mall where it's basically competition. You know, you're going the you're competing with one of the biggest um, burger places in town, which is Mondo Burger. Only to note the difference between that restaurant is that their burgers have bigger patties. And then that's where we learn the secret of what's going around. Yeah. Um, but this had a simple story. I mean, you got Ed, you know just dreaming about you know serving the the customers good burgers well yeah just getting them their orders and then suddenly all the good burgers fly around and then all this other stuff happening then he's rolling around in the skates and then and then he finally made it while the construction worker Robert Rule just left then it focuses on Dexter who's played by Keenan Thompson Who's just ready to go on summer vacation, having fun, until suddenly he bumps into Ed just when he was about to roll on the skates. You know, skate, yeah, roller skates. Just getting the order, but for delivery, because because <laughs> um, the other um, employer got fired. So. It causes an accident. That's where he bumps into um, to his teacher, who's played by Sinbad, and so on and so forth. That he had to pay for all the damages by getting a summer job. First, it was Mondo Burger, which he had to deal with Kurt, who was a complete jerk. He fired him because you know he started, uh, <laughs> you know, making a lot of. Um, a lot of crazy jokes behind his back. I mean, now that I think about it, Kurt was pretty much the Tony Perkis of Mondo Burger, if you think about that. I mean, no, he's not doing the Perkis system, but he's just, you know, going around, you know, serving and be able to run this place up the ground before they get shut down at all. Uh, anyway, okay, I know, I'm, I'm going over the place, but I can't help it. Um, I love this movie so much, I wanted to see it again and again. I could have got this on VHS, but I ended up taping it on pay-per-view by going to my cousin's house, Opa, because she had uh, cable, you know, Media One. She actually gets to watch pay-per-view on there to order. So I thought this would be the perfect time because I just had spring break. And I wanted to actually tape this movie. It came with a short, but it turned out to be Cat Dog. <sighs> Go figure. I never liked that show at all. One of the worst Nicktoons ever, period. <sighs> so that's why I had a chance to actually watch the entire movie on TV. And I still had fun. I was just sitting around, you know, having some chips and and some Pepsi while watching the film. <laughs> uh, joining in with Opa and his and her boyfriend, and Jason joined in too. So we had a good time. Uh, and then I started bringing the tape to um, my fellow classmates at middle school, and they wanted to watch it too. And they love it. I mean, even though middle school did suck, but I don't want to get to that argument. 
Um, so I watched this many times um, on TV. It was on HBO, Sh Cinemax, and it was on NBC. And I even watched it constantly on my VHS tape. And then later I picked up another VHS tape at the first store, and I was ready to make a better copy out of it. So I could take off that, that cat dog short, because I hated that. I just wish that the tape actually contained the Ash and Lead Now short, but I guess we can't have it all. I finally got the DVD at Circuit City. When I found out that it was in widescreen, which I'm happy for that, and they had it for a cheaper price, $7.99, it was definitely worth it. I wish it had features, though. And it sucks that we can't even get anything these days because, you know, we have streaming now. They have an HD print that looks even better. But I still wish we had a Blu-ray. And I can't believe we still don't have one. Amazing. I mean, Paramount is just so lazy for catalog titles. Especially that we finally got Mean Girls uh, on Blu-ray for its 15th anniversary. And it's basically just the same Blu-ray as before. Because it was out of print. I couldn't find it. I only found the DVD at Goodwill. But mistakenly I bought the full screen version. But now I finally got the Blu-ray at Target. So I'm just happy. I just hope I will do the same for all the other films that I could find in stores. But Still, I think this movie is a classic. No doubt. It's hilarious, zany, wacky, goofy, but fun. And I didn't see this just for nostalgia reasons. I saw this because I thought it was an awesome movie. No doubt. And that's why I love it. You know, I love these guys. And I still do, even to this day. And I really wish it does deserve all the respect it gets, unlike today's people, you know, just dismissing it for no reason at all. You know, just everybody has to be, you know, PC these days, you know, saying a lot of negative things that just makes no sense at all. And this is another reason why I'm doing this video is because I just saw, out of all people, Matt Roller, a.k.a. Rambo Rap for Life, who just reviewed this movie just now. And... I I'm sorry to say this, I mean, I respect his opinions, okay, I know he has different tastes of films, okay, I like him, okay, I admit it, alright, nobody's perfect, I don't want to lose respect from him, and I sure don't, but I always have a feeling that it might be, a, that sooner or later I think it's going to happen, but I don't. I mean, I, I know he's been going through hard times. I understand that, okay? The last review I saw, I disagree with, and that was Alita Battle Angel, okay? It's fine if he doesn't like the movie, okay? It's fine. But can I have my own opinion by saying that his review was pathetic? He should understand that. If he goes around saying that my review is pathetic, well, that's fine, okay? I mean, no hard feelings here, right? I'm going to defend what I'm going to defend. I'm sorry, man. His review was just terrible. And the fact that this is a Patreon request, yes, because he has a Patreon account, so that way he can make more money, so he can go around, you know, spending some time, you know, maybe buying some gifts, or, or even, you know, go out to see a movie. So that way he'll be able to review it as soon as possible, beyond everyone's requests. I mean, I wish I could do something like this, but I have a feeling that now I know exactly what he's going to do, you know? You know, and I'm not rich, okay? So I can't do that. You know, I'm, I'm smaller than everyone here. But... After seeing this review, it's like he just doesn't seem to get it. You know, he did say that, yes, I know the movie is a childhood favorite, yada, yada, yada. But I thought it was pretty stupid and goofy and all that stuff. 
Now he's going around, you know, just laying on the black couch in this nice particular room, sitting around casually, and then he's getting some water, you know, just so maybe, you know, he can clear his throat or so, while just bringing in his precious mic to talk right through. I mean, come on, man. This is pathetic. And if that wasn't bad enough, look at the comments section right there. I just saw one comment that really pisses me off where one guy, I'm not going to mention his name, he says, this movie is pure cringe. The fact that Dan Schneider's fingerprints are all over it makes it even more cringe. Yeah, you know... I'm getting sick of the word cringe nowadays because I think this is overused. Well, what do you expect, uh, someone out there? I mean, it's supposed to be a goofy, wacky comedy. I mean, geez. The fact that you're saying it's cringy just proves that you have no taste. God, man. Where's your funny bone for crying out loud? And then. There's one guy saying it as a reply. Are you referring Dan Schneider's foot fetish? I heard those allegations towards Dan Schneider since I watched Blame It on George many documentaries on YouTube. Yeah, well guess what? I think this allegations that's going around is total bullshit. You know? I'm just getting sick and tired of hearing about this stuff because it's trying to make things very difficult. It's a disgusting matter and it's it's talking down to kids and everyone down their throats. And I don't want that. You know, I, I am sick and tired of hearing all this stuff, especially towards celebrities, okay? Especially after the Harvey Weinstein's incident, okay? Yes, the guy is a fucking asshole. I get it. I don't want this shit. And luckily there are a few people that did say this movie is funny as hell. I don't blame you, of course, because it's awesome. And there's another guy that says this movie was hilarious, and I agree. But then I saw like some stupid comments saying, I saw this as a kid, but I wouldn't watch it nowadays. I'd rather watch Tim Burton's Batman films, which I do enjoy way more. You know, comedies are subjected, okay? That's a superhero movie, for crying out loud, alright? So you're comparing Batman to Good Burger? That's pathetic. And then there's one person saying, I can't believe I enjoyed this when I was a kid. What the hell was I smoking? Oh, well, I still own it on VHS. <sighs> oh, boy, man. Why does this keep going on? Uh, I don't get everyone in this... I'm sorry, man. I, I really don't get everyone in this. It's bad enough that I saw Doug Walker, a.k.a. Nostalgia Critics, review. And it's, you know, this is a guy who's been putting out some, oh, I don't know, a lot of cringe-inducing um, reviews and all these other videos where he ends up putting all these crappy sketches that has nothing to do with the movie at all. Or the fact that it has something to do with it, but it just seems to go on and on. Even if it's clipless or not. I couldn't even laugh once in any of his videos. Except one of his previous videos where he takes on bad movies. You know, they were funny. They really were. At least that's what I thought. But then sometimes he goes a bit too far. And I lost respect for that. Because he, he's just running out of material. You know, he just doesn't care anymore. But now, out of all people, I had to deal with Matt. I already had a problem with him with his last review, which was Alita Battle Angel. 
I loved that movie. I had a good time. You know, I hardly ever get to do anything nowadays. But every once in a while, I would do go out to see a movie or maybe have some time. But hey, you know, what can we do? <laughs> you know, and it's a movie I would rather watch more often besides watching superhero films or, or any other movies that I had to check out. But hey, you know, it's, it's nice to find something that's, uh, that becomes a new favorite. But his review just ticks me off. You know, I mean, I, I know, I watch his videos, okay? You know, I do agree with him at times, okay? There's movies that I do love that he loves. I mean, there's other films that his friend Mike Brown loves, too, okay? But if there are films that he hates, like, for example, 187 with Samuel Jackson. Now, that film, I, I would agree, because I thought that film was not only pretentious and boring, but it's also mean-spirited, and I thought the gangsters in the film were portrayed poorly. They're not very good actors. And I feel like Samuel Jackson must have been wasting his time. But hey, I understand because, you know, he needed some work. I mean, this was supposed to be his first starring role after um, his performance with Pulp Fiction. So, yeah. But it's just sometimes when, when it comes to other films that I understand, you yeah, know, maybe he's not interested in but ends up becoming a movie that I love it just pains me to to sit it just pains me it's just totally painful to sit in my easy chair and watch the entire like either 12 or maybe even longer than that of him just bitching and complaining not getting any meaning of it whatsoever and that's just what got me so upset and dumbfounded I mean I, I understand you know everyone has different tastes in movies okay I, I started to defend North recently I defended it because I didn't think it was as bad as people think you know maybe because I got the jokes okay I mean some of it is pretty much political as you could tell I mean, I'm not a political guy, but I, at least I, I followed it, exactly what was happening. But it wasn't taking itself too seriously. I mean, I understand, you know, people have their hard times, but I, it's not like it's going to kill you to enjoy it. I mean, jeez, no one's putting a gun to your head. I mean, Good Burger had a lot of funny moments, okay, that... I guarantee you, even if I had to show you clips of it, which I can't, but if I could try, I would. I mean, I'll just share it on Facebook. I mean, there's like so many of them. You know, I guarantee you, everyone's going to start laughing hysterically for those who have sense of humor. But I guess for those who don't, well, that's your loss. But hey, you know, Cisco and Ebert also didn't like the movie either, which I don't understand too. I mean, yeah, Cisco calls it awful. You know, one of them is dumb. I mean, Roger tried to actually, um, even though he didn't recommend it himself, but um, he felt that Cisco was too harsh. But at least he was trying. I mean, even not for himself, but he was just trying to at least maybe recommend it for those who love it, you know, in a way. But still, man, I mean, there have been so many worse films out there. There's even worse comedies, especially raunchy comedies with cracks, okay? I mean, yes, there are ones that work, like The Hangover, or even movies like Bridesmaids, or The Heat, or hell, even Spy, yeah, Paul Feig films, or any, any, or even any comedy that Judd Apatow has done, okay? 
But there have been worse ones, too. Alright? Even the ones that were trying to be memorable, but failed. And I just felt like this movie really deserves a lot of attention, okay? You know, we're not expecting Citizen Kane here, okay? We're not expecting, like, any other film that came out, especially in this decade that we're in. Or the last decade, you know? Not every film has to be, you know, uh, like Broke Bad Mountain or Crash or Million Dollar Baby or or even the, the Social Network, which, ugh, which in my opinion is totally pretentious. But I've seen better David Fincher films out there like Seven and Fight Club, even The Game, which deserves more attention. Um, or any other film that came out, uh, like The Master, you know, like some of the films Amy Adams had done, you know, that I enjoy, like The Fighter, or Doubt, or, <laughs> but I wasn't, but we're not expecting those, okay? You know, it's subjected, you know, comedies are subjected, just like dramas, you know, action films. Animation, um, documentaries, I mean, any other, I mean, that you can think of. I mean, it's, it's, that's what movies are for, you know, to have fun. You know, just sit back, relax, and enjoy, you know, eat some popcorn, have some soda, or you have some candy or any other uh, foods, you know, condiments that you, you could choose. Or or just sit back and just, without any food, just watch it and just relax. And, you know, think to yourself, you know. You know, if, if it's good or bad, you know. Make your make your own opinion. Okay. And I, I understand. I'm trying to respect everyone's opinions here, okay. No one's perfect. And I know that's what everybody's doing. I mean, even when Eber was with Roper, uh, ever since the 2000s, I mean, because Cisco died in 1999, and Eber was going to get some replacements, because he didn't want to work alone, um, they defended cats and dogs. And that's one of the worst family-friendly uh, movies I've ever saw. And I couldn't believe it. And then that film gets a sequel. And I hope that Good Burger does get a sequel someday. I'm not so sure that's ever going to happen. I mean, we did have a book sequel. And I think that would have been cool if that actually did happen. But, I mean, especially back in the 90s, though. But at the time, you know, they left all that. You know, they still continue with Keenan and Kill. You know, Kill Mitchell had to do Mystery Man, while both of them had to do The Adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle, which I actually did enjoy, the live-action version. I mean, I know it's not perfect, but you get the idea. I'm sorry, man, that Matt doesn't like the movie. I'm sorry that Doug didn't like it, but I don't give a crap what you and your brother thinks, alright? I think you guys should definitely go into the grinder and stay there. I'm going to defend this movie for the rest of my life until the day I die. Same goes with heavyweights, same goes with all the other movies I've seen, everything. I mean, Matt could have his defense with Jurassic Park 3 or the Child's Play remake, which is pathetic, or possibly the Unfriended movies, or any other movie that he, he can like. I mean, yes, he loves Hard Target. He loves Predator 2. I do love both of those films as well. Don't get me wrong. Okay? 
I hate Alien Free as much as he does. Same goes with his friends. You know, I can defend one movie that they don't like as they can defend a movie that I don't like, okay? The point is, is that, hey, at least, you know, we're still there, okay? I mean, they're cool guys. I respect them no matter what happens. You know, I don't want to lose respect, okay? I want to gain respect. And that's fine, okay? But, I'm going to defend it for all it's worth. Okay? It's my favorite movie, and I'm never going to change my mind. I don't care what anybody says. Okay? I may be 34 years old, going over 35, but I will still appreciate it. Just as I appreciated heavyweights and any other movie out there. Okay? So. So, take my advice here, okay? If you love the movie, I'm pretty sure you'll love my review that I did a long time ago. And I bet you appreciate that you'll love some of the videos I posted, too. But it was nice to see that, you know, there are a lot of people who not only are fans of the TV series, but also they grew up with Nickelodeon themselves. But they all grew up, and they loved his comedy act that he did. It was amazing. It was hilarious. I laughed so hard, even at my old age. I mean, I was only 30 when I saw him. That was one of the best times of my entire life. I would have loved to go to the Good Burger pop-up restaurant in Westwood. I mean, it would have been awesome. I would have got to see the rest of the cast from all that. Well, sadly, it was only some of them. And then there was also a lot of Nickelodeon stars from other shows in the 90s that joined in, too. That would have been cool. I mean, I would have taken my camera. I would have gave it a guided tour to what it looks like. I would have had those mouth-watering, juicy Good Burgers with Ed's Secret Sauce included, and it would have been delicious. Joining in with good fries and a good drink, you know, like orange soda, because Kel loves orange soda. Is it true? Mm-hmm. I do, I do, I do, I do, ew! <laughs> I still need to pick up the soundtrack, because it had a lot of great songs. And I mean a lot of great songs, including We're All Dudes by Les and Jake, with Kill Mitchell joining in. Uh, 702, yeah, Kill Mitchell also joining in. It was all the music video, among other songs. Um, I wish I had the movie poster. I still wish I did. I wish I had a lot of stuff, too. You know, I, I'm just glad that, you know, there are people out there who respect... Uh, this movie, yet alone, the sketch comedy from all that. I'm glad they brought back all that. You know, with Keenan Thompson and Kill Mitchell being the producers and writers, and I know they're trying their best. I mean, even though it's not easy considering that they're in a new decade and it's not the 90s anymore. Yeah. Yeah, back when everything was, you know, better. But it just seems like, you know. It's all part of our memories that we had. I know we're not kids anymore. We're adults, okay? But, hey, legends will never die. I mean, they'll always be remembered. And I know I'm repeating myself, but hey, what can you do? But even looking back at the film, they put a lot of heart and energy that made it so great to begin with. Like, you know, they had a lot of stunt doubles doing those scenes. I mean, especially the, the scene where um, a demented mental uh, patient who's very tall and strong suddenly uh, throws uh, Dexter out of the window so they can escape. I mean, they did use a stunt double for that. So you know that 
Keenan didn't do his stunts. And I'm pretty certain that Kill Mitchell didn't jump out of the window. Um, same goes with uh, Ape Pagoda. Or even the chase scene, you know, with um, all the mental doctors. You know, just chasing after them. You know, driving the ice cream truck. Well, they're driving the, the Demented Hills uh, truck, you know, chasing after them, and they're crashing, you know, and, and of course, there's the gag scene where they're always, you know, destroying the, <laughs> um, Dexter's teacher's is, um, mailbox, <laughs> or, of course, his car being destroyed, you know, several times, or how about the stunt, um, you know, during the destruction of Mondo Burger, you know, when um, Ed actually found the Trampasol and he accidentally uh, poured it inside the uh, the meat grinder and then, and then he just pours it in anyway because, you know, who cares, but he just stole an empty can. Uh, I mean, Brian Robbins um, wrote and, and directed this movie, joining in with... Um, Mike Tolan, and I mean, they, and this is um, his second film after the show, um, which could be his first um, Nickelodeon film that he ever done. I mean, considering the fact that he worked on all that and Keenan Kell, as well as The Amanda Show, among others, joining in with Dan Schneider, and, and have respect to the guy, okay? Come on. I mean, at least, you know, it's a better comedy than Norbit that he did with Eddie Murphy. Following with Meet Dave and A Thousand Words, I guarantee you, man, at least Good Burger isn't gross out like those films are and are not offensive. I mean, take your pick, man. And this is definitely one of his better works, that along with Varsity Blues. I mean, come on, man. I mean, after all, I mean, these guys had done the TV show Head of the Class, joining in with Dan Frischman. I mean, think about it, man. I mean, it's also good that they even uh, brought back all that, you know, with Keenan Thompson and Kill Mitchell being one of the producers. But I do wish, you know, there were more to it, but I understand. You know, they had to go on for the new cast. You know, even with today's... Uh, humor. That's why I love it so much. I mean, there's a lot of funny moments in Good Burger. I mean, come on, even with Ed, you know, the blue 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 blue, blue when he puts those grapes on his nose or any of these other dialogues that are indeed adults, but some kids will understand. I mean, come on, man. It's on PC not oversensitive, it's not offensive either. Lighten up, guys. Come on. You know, I just can't stand the negativity this film gets. I mean, jeez, I mean, it's not the end of the world, folks. It's not going to kill you. It's just a fun, harmless, family-friendly kids movie. Okay? Jeez. All right. I swear, people these days just have no sense of humor. Yet alone sense of taste, okay? Not every film has to be Citizen Kane, all right? Or your precious, pretentious social network. Or any other movie, you know? Like the Dark Knight. You know, I, I hey, I love the Dark Knight, okay? Or any, or Joker, or any other, okay? But why can't we have our choices? That's why I'm defending this because it really deserves more love than hate. Okay. I'm glad this film is getting some attention here. I'm glad there are people out there who respect it. And I just wish there are others out there who could. You know, not having to listen to Nostalgia Critics Review or any other person out there who thinks this movie sucks. 
There are plenty of worse films out there that sucks ass. And yet there are other films out there that also sucks, but it gets a pass. Like Jumanji Welcome to the Jungle. Along with its sequel. Which, both of which might as well be sequels anyway. Because it's not paying respect to the 1995 original with Robin Williams. I just don't understand people these days. Well, everyone's a critic. I like Matt Roller, okay? AKA Ramble Rat for Life. I respect his opinion. I'll keep it that way. But if something goes wrong, then I don't know, alright? But I just don't want this to become a problem, alright? You know? I know, it's a movie, you know, I'm sorry that I'm so eccentric and so excited over it, you know, I'm sorry I'm, I'm taking this too far, but I'm just getting tired of it, you know, I'm tired of having to hear negativity, no more of this, alright? I posted all of the funniest moments, all taken on YouTube, they posted it already, I I just posted it on Facebook to explain exactly why did I love it so much. Okay? Plain and simple. You know, it wasn't taking itself too seriously. Alright? I'm just tired of it. But anyway, that's my defense on Good Burger, one of my favorite um, Nickelodeon movies, yet alone Keen and Kel, um, right up there with all my other favorite films like Enchanted, uh, Back to the Future, Ghostbusters, and of course Heavyweights, and Alita Battle Angel, among many other favorites like The Sandlot, The Mighty Ducks films, um, Ready Player One, or <laughs> I, I mean, I, The Goonies, or Gremlins, or oh, I could just name them all. <laughs> I mean, for my huge list of films, and Terminator, uh, Predator, Aliens, I mean, yeah, everything. And maybe some other movies that I'm appreciated. So okay. <laughs> so this film should never be shit on at all. It should be defended. But hey, I understand. If you don't like the movie, then that's your choice. But for those who do, I mean, just respect it. Okay. Life's too short. Enjoy while you can. Anyway, I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and <laughs> welcome to Good Burger, home of the Good Burger. Can I take your order? <laughs>